Hello, welcome to week five, unit seven, the structuring assignment. What are the structuring assignments? The structuring assignment simplifies the access to list and tuples. So far, we have always seen that a function can return one value. Actually, it's possible to return multiple values from a function using a list or a tuple. And using a destructuring assignment, we can split these multiple values into individual variables again. And there's also a shortcut for stuff that we want to ignore. So we could, for example, just grab the first and the last element of a list and ignore everything else. And that's also what is already shown in the small code snippet I put on the slide. But it's showtime again. Let's jump over to our Jupyter Notebooks and see how the structuring assignment works in the Jupyter Notebook. So here we are in the Jupyter Notebook. And the first thing I want to show you is how you actually can return multiple values using the return statement. And this is what's done with this small code example here. I have here a small function, which is called my favorite songs. And I define three songs, namely Ace of Spades, Dirty, and Blue Train. And I return all these songs using one return statement right here. I put the different helper variables, song one, song two, song three, behind the return statement and separate them by commas. What does this actually mean? So if I execute this Moodle code sample, you see that the result, so what is returned from the my favorite song function is actually a tuple. And the tuple contains the three elements. So when you use the return statement, as I've shown you here, what actually happens is there is a Python creates a tuple and returns the tuple. And that way you can return multiple values from a function. And afterwards, it's of course, possible to access the individual elements of this returned tuple using the index. And this is exactly what I'm doing right here. So I try to find out what is my most favorite song. So I grab the first element from the returned tuple. And the result is that my favorite song is Ace of Spades. So now we have seen how multiple elements can be returned from a function. And this corresponds nicely to the destructuring assignment to destructure function results. So we know there's a function my favorite songs, and this function my favorite songs returns multiple elements. And what I can do right now in one assignment, I can assign these different elements to other variables. I have here three variables my favorite song my least favorite song, and there's something in the middle, an underscore. The underscore is just another variable name, a very uncommon variable name. And this in Python is a convention for a throwaway variable. Something I don't care about the value. Whenever I don't care about a value, I can put the underscore here, and every Python programmer would understand that I don't care. So let's see how this program works. I call my favorite songs. This will return a tuple containing three elements. And I assign the first element to favorite songs and the last element to least favorite song. And the result would be my favorite song is Ace of Spades. My third favorite song is Blue Train. And just to, to show you that the underscore is actually a really a real variable, we can see what's in it, and that's the second song in the list, it's dirty. So using a destructuring assignment, we can grab the individual elements from a tuple returned from a function. One thing we have to keep in mind though, we always need to know how many elements are in the return tuple. So if I, for example, try to do something like this, I try to assign the tuple containing three elements to two helper variables, I get an error message because Python tells me that there are too many values to unpack. No? I just expected two, but actually 
they are three. But that's a quite common situation. A lot of the times you don't know how many values will be returned from a function because maybe a user enters something or you read data from a database. And that's where the star expressions come into play. The star expression can be used to assign everything else in a destructuring assignment. And this is exactly what I do here. So I try to assign my most favorite song, so the first in the returned tuple, to the variable favorite song, and all the rest to a variable called rest. In order to tell Python that everything else should be assigned to rest, we need to put the little star first. If we do this, you will see that now the program works. We don't get an error message. And what happens is that the first element is assigned to favorite song. And the rest, the rest is a list in this case. Yeah? The rest of the tuple containing my favorite songs, which is Dirty and Blue Train, are assigned to a list. Now that's maybe quite complex to understand what happens here. Um, take a look at it again. What you always have to remember that the star is a shortcut that tells Python that everything that can't be assigned to a variable should be assigned to, uh, to this helper that should contain everything else. And of course, we can do it the other way around as well. So having a star is not only possible in the end of a list, it's also possible at the beginning of a list. So I want to find out only my least favorite song. I could do it like this. Everything is assigned to the favorite songs and only the least favorite song is assigned to a other variable. Let's try to execute this. And you see that the least favorite song in the list is Blue Train and the rest is assigned to a list which is called favorite songs. So and that's quite useful when you work with functions which return multiple values, and it's also something you will see quite often inside Python code. But it's not only possible to do a destructuring assignment when returning something from a function, but it's actually always possible when you have a sequence type. And this is what I'm showing you here. I have a list of possible prime numbers. So that's two, three, five, seven, and so on. And I can assign these prime numbers to different variables using a destructuring assignment. What I do here, I assign the smallest prime. I don't care about everything else and the largest prime. And what is the result of this assignment? Yeah, so we see that the smallest prime in the list is two, the largest prime in the list is a 19, and what I didn't Print in this example is everything else. Let's do this for completeness as well. We know underscore is don't care, and it's usually not used, but just to show you what this all looks like. So uh, we say, and the rest of the list is, uh, let's try to makes this easily visible that there's something else. And now I did an error. What did I do wrong? Mm. Well, it seems I can't use the underscore with um, that way. So let's uh, do this like this. We do this just as we did before. Um, we do a separate print statement, and then we see what was assigned to the don't care variable. Uh, and we see the rest of the list. This prime number 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, and 17 are now assigned to this underscore variable. But always remember, it's a convention to use this just when you don't care actually about it. So we shouldn't print it out. As I mentioned, yeah, you can use 
destructuring assignments with sequences. And you might remember that range is just another sequence type. So I can easily use a destructuring assignment with a range as well. What I do here is I create a range from 0 to 20 in steps of 3. And I assign the first number to a variable called first number, the second element to a variable called second number, and all the rest to something called rest. And if we execute this, we see that the first number in the range is 0. So range always starts with 0. We go in steps of 3, so the next number is 6. And then we have all the rest, and the rest is 6, 9, 12, 15, and 18. So that shows you that you can use this destructuring assignment with each and every sequence type in Python. And finally, I want to show you one more pattern. That's something you might see as well quite often in Python code, that is using a destructuring assignment in loops. And in order to do this, I created one list here. The list is called, again, songs. And the songs list contains a tuple which has a song title and its playground. For example, Ace of Spades has been played 99 times. Blue Train has been played 42 times, and so on. And what happens quite often is that you need to access all the elements or several elements of a tuple inside a loop. And you can easily already assign these elements when you um, define the for loop. So instead of accessing each song in the songs list, I do a destructuring assignment here. So I know there are two elements, so I assign name and play count. So for every name and play count in songs, I print the name and its play count. Let's execute this as well. And you see, I have now the result that Ace of Spades has been played 99 times and so on, up until Let's Creek Bob, which has been played 17 times. Yeah. And you see here, we have the destructuring assignment that helps accessing the different elements of the tuples inside the songs list. Instead of using the index, we can destructure it and use proper variable names. So just as a comparison, I also have here, so to say the traditional way um, we used to do it, instead of adding Instead of adding the destructuring up here inside the for loop, we could also um, just grab the songs from the song list and perform the destructuring afterwards um, in, a, in a separate line. Now that's basically the same, but it makes it a little bit more clearer what's happening here. And if we execute this, we basically get the same result. Let's jump back to our slides. So what have you learned in this unit? You have seen first how multiple values can be returned from a function. Then we have seen how we can use a destructuring assignment to assign these multiple return values to individual variables. And finally, we have also seen what we can do with all the rest, so that there's a star operator that can be used to assign what has been left from a list to a new list. Thanks for watching. This has been the last unit for week five. I hope to see you again in week six and good luck with your weekly assignment.